Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. This is the weekly chart of the Dow 30 industrials provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. I'm going to use this for a proxy for the entire stock market. It's not exactly accurate, but it's fairly accurate. You can see at the bottom of the financial crisis, the Dow was at roughly 6,500. You can see that the Dow's at 16,500. So the Dow has gained over the course of this time. This is the exact time frame we're going to be looking at. Pretty much the extent of Obama's presidency. About 10,000 points. Now, we're going to show you what that breaks down into as far as market cap and actual dollars. Before we do that, I want to look at this HFT issue. Now, this issue is all over the place now we know that the media is completely controlled so if anything breaks on the mainstream media and that of course would include zero hedge then we know that it is planted it's time it's all coordinated so the big question is going to be why are they breaking the story on hft now i can show you that's true here you can just go over to Google Trends and look up the term HFT and you can see here's the interest over time growing very gradually not really even spiking during the financial crisis it's spiking right now and it goes straight to 100 and that is the highest rating you can have on Google Trends so there's no question that the powers that be are rolling out this HFT story. Why are they rolling out this story now? Well, I believe they're looking for cover to crash the stock market. And I believe that's what's going to happen. I came to that conclusion when Obama, in his State of the Union, did something that I did not expect him to do. I'd been saying for the longest time that I expected him to crash the stock market and then introduce the bailout by people's retirements of the Treasury and it came in a reverse order at all-time highs Obama actually rolled that out for this Myra program and as one would expect it is a complete flop because why would anybody be interested in a guaranteed fixed rate of something like one two or three percent when the stock market is giving incredible gains uh, percentage wise so now they're rolling out this HFT thing there's HFT which is high frequency trading and then there's front running these are both practices that have been going on in Wall Street for decades uh, high frequency trading just simply means that th the computers of a particular broker are that close to the exchange so that they can execute the trades that fast and also that they can execute the trades a large number of very fast trades so there's three things that we have going on here we have these Wall Street firms reacting to news and as the news comes in and breaks they want to be the first one there to front run the news we'll say then we have front running official front running which is uh, front running of announcements by the Fed and we've seen that before with unemployment and things like that and uh, then we have the HFT trading which is used to manipulate prices and that means computers are trading back and forth with each other at a very very rapid rate on a small number of shares and manipulating the price we saw that in the May flash crash where the prices of certain stocks went all the way to zero through this high frequency trading uh, like I said this is nothing new it's been around at least since 1987 and this is a way that Wall Street steals money from Main Street they have they front run they use high frequency trading and they use the high frequency trading to rig markets they're doing it in the gold and silver market they're doing it in the stock market so the question is is why have they introduced this trend and again I believe the reason why is that they intend 
to bring down the stock market and try to funnel people into these guaranteed government retirement accounts. Now we've got the latest story here about this Ryan budget. That's Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan is a term, I'll say he's a stooge, that they roll out every time they want to have a bad guy. You can see that here. We'll read a little bit of the story. House Budget Chairman Committee Chairman Paul Ryan unveiled an updated Republican budget plan Tuesday that would slash $5.1 trillion in federal spending over the coming decade. <laughs> it's always in the future. And promises to balance the government's books with wide-ranging cuts in programs like, and here's your cuts, here's, here's the evil, bad conservative guy. Cuts to food stamps, to health care, to grants to students and pensions for federal workers and Medicare. So Paul Ryan's the guy that they trot out there every time and then what happens is there's a big hue and cry. Uh, the Republicans who aren't fiscal conservatives in the first place, they get more money for their friends and then the Democrats end up getting more money for their friends and then the budget blows up and blows out again which has been happening forever so this is just a pattern they keep repeating now let me show you how that pattern works and actually how they have just used that to funnel money into the stock market to pay off their friends on Wall Street now if you haven't seen the movie Wolf of Wall Street I don't really recommend that movie there's a lot of profanity and obscenity etc but being someone who had spent some time in both series 7 and series 3 brokerages that's stocks and commodities which both pretty much operate under the same premise it shows you a boiler room situation and this person played by Leonardo DiCaprio started off in a Wall Street brokerage and then that went bankrupt and he ended up going into a bucket shop and then he or not a bucket shop but a boiler room and then he figured out how to run the best boiler room around and ultimately he broke his way into Wall Street firms and IPOs and stuff like that and then ultimately was arrested but the stuff that you see in that movie goes on all the time. That's how Wall Street is run. I think one of the quotes from the movie was, we were selling garbage to garbage men. And that's how they look at you. That's how they look at your retirement. It's just something for Wall Street to steal from. Now, the way they steal from it, I want to show you some numbers here that give you an idea of where we've come from and where we're going. So if we go and pull up this site, which is stock market capitalization by country, this is on quandle.com. You can see here, here's the G20 economies. Now, one of the first things that really jumps out at you when you look at this is that the United States is on top here. This is in, going, uh, in units of billions. So that, that number is going to be 18.668 trillion. <clears throat> now that's as of 2012. And you can see we've added a significant amount on, at least on the Dow. So my guess is that number is probably $20 trillion. Now what's interesting about this is right behind it is China and then Japan. Now these aren't actually in order. Let's put them in order of level. And then here's in order of level you can see the US then China then Japan then the UK then Canada France Germany uh, so you can see the EU nations and the UK is not really part of the EU but if you add up the EU nations it really doesn't amount to anything but you can actually add up all the nations below the US you've got about 7 10 12 14 15 16 17 so it takes just about all of the other nations in the world added together to equal the market cap of the US stock market which is just absolutely insane but if we look at 
the change, and fortunately with this five year, this gives us just that time frame that we're looking at here with this Obama bottom, I'll call it, at 6,500 on the Dow all the way up to the present 16,500. You can see that we went from about 11.7 trillion to about 18.6 trillion. So we're talking about adding roughly seven trillion dollars onto the market cap of the entire stock market in the US. Now what's so fascinating about that is that I pulled the debt to the penny statistics from the Treasury Direct site debt to the penny and you can see I pulled these dates I pulled that that was basically the bottom actually I'm sorry that that's 2008 so we'll have to go 2009 but I meant to pull March 2009 through the present so we'll go up to March of 2009 and you'll see that we had about 10.9 trillion that was the size of the national debt whereas today we're about 17.6 trillion so we've added again roughly that 7 trillion dollars on to the national debt so during the exact same time frame that 7 trillion dollars has been added on to the market cap of US stocks 7 trillion dollars has been added on to the US national debt now that's money that you and I owe, that's money that the taxpayer owes. So that is money that is, in my opinion, has been transferred directly from the pockets of U.S. taxpayers to the pockets of Wall Street billionaires. Now, the people like George Soros and Warren Buffett and all the people, the 1% that people like to call them, or the 1% of 1% people like to call them, their wealth has gone up tremendously as this $7 trillion has pretty much been handed over to them. We know that most of the infrastructure in the country is crumbling. We know that the job situation is terrible and we know that businesses really aren't investing anything in capital investments so pretty much that seven trillion dollars taken from future taxpayers has been handed over to wealthy stock market investors now you have to remember with the HFT what Wall Street does firms like Goldman JP Morgan Morgan Stanley they basically skim off of that money. So if you think about seven trillion dollars, that's quite a skim. Now I'll, I'll give you an example of when I was in the commodities business. When you open up an account, when you start out as a broker and you're essentially in sort of a boiler room operation, then you're trying to dial for dollars. You're trying to call out, and get new accounts, and your base basic account for one of those brokerages is usually about five grand that's about how much money it takes to get in the business so you're dialing for dollars trying to get new people into that and usually you make the calls on that you're making money on commission you're not making money on whether your customer makes money as I said from the Wolf of Wall Street the quote is we were selling garbage to garbage men they weren't interested in how much money they were making their clients they were interested in how much commission they could skim in that movie they were selling from the pink sheets and he was delighted to find out that they actually got a 50 percent commission so when I was doing that asking a series of questions about people and losing money for them the answer was that well if someone has about five thousand dollars it's a lot better to just blow up their account that's the term that they use blow up their account and just wipe them out completely because you get paid those commissions but uh, they're not around to call you and ask a bunch of hard questions uh, they're just gone their accounts blown up so that's how Wall Street works they're interested in the skim they're interested in taking their cut and so we've got 
this process of indebting the American public using tax money to pump up the capitalization of the stock market so that billionaires become richer billionaires and all the while Wall Street is skimming off as much money as they can steal before the lights go out and the entire thing collapses. I believe that's what is going to happen. I don't believe that this trend that we've had since Obama took office can continue. I can't even imagine what his popularity ratings will be if uh, we have a drastically declining market because his entire presidency we've had a rising stock market and again that's just money printed by the Fed handed over to the banks and invested in Wall Street so their friends can get rich and we'll talk to you next time